तो ये हाँ हाँ कर लिया वो देखो प्रीव्यू भी आ गया ना एक सेकंड लेट मी सी नेट तो वही है ना करियर रेवेन्यूज़ फाइव जी फाइव जी है अभी टाइम नहीं है टाइम हो गया है फाइव थर्टी बच्चे आ रहे हैं कर लेता हूँ क्या करूँ डोंट हैव एनी ऑप्शन ना जो भी होगा देखा जाएगा Hi guys, welcome to the KP classes and in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the history of early Christian art. So let's get started now. So I would like to discuss with all of you what was early Christian art. Early Christian art refers to the art produced by the Christians from the first to the sixth century so if you know about little bit about art history this was the first phase when people made artwork related to any historical event or religious event uh, with consciousness before that uh, we had uh, prehistoric art and this is the time when uh, artists made art related to the uh, religious aspects that too about Christianity during this time Christians were per persecuted minority in the Roman Empire and their art was often created in secret or in underground catacombs yes this is quite true uh, during this duration or this time period from the first century AD till sixth century AD uh, it was not very common to practice Christianity in the Roman Empire so uh, those people who were follower of the Christianity they used catacombs catacombs are actually underground graveyard that Christian people or the Christian community used to bury the people of their family relatives right that this was a kind of uh, funeral uh, the area and that that place when after some time some archaeological surveys happen and these things found so artists and historians found these uh, artifacts as well as the symbols and there were a lot of things that was found in these catacombs now coming to the next part would like to discuss more about the early Christian art so in this third point you can <clears throat> see easily that early Christian art was heavily influenced by Roman art but also developed new artistic traditions to express Christians themes and beliefs so if you would see some symbols which were actually made from the inspiration of Christianity so you will understand this that uh, there were some certain techniques were obtained from the Roman art and the Greek art but they have developed some new artistic traditions as well uh, by using these traditions they have made some specific symbols to represent their specific religion early Christian art often depicted important religious figures and stories such as Jesus the Virgin Mary and the Apostles which were the uh, followers and the disciples of Jesus Christ through mosaics frescoes and sculptures 
so there were three major things or you can see uh, you can say the techniques that uh, the artists of that era they used mosaics frescoes and sculpture so uh, we would discuss about these three techniques as well so I want you to like and share this video also subscribe to our channel you will get uh, these kind of videos quite frequently now let's talk more about yes so what is written symbols that were important to the Christians such as the fish and the cross were often used to used in combination with other images to convey important religious messages so this is quite true I would show you some symbols as well in upcoming slides that uh, these were very important the symbols related to Christianity like uh, there is a symbol which looks like a fish that has a specific meaning the cross is very important in Christianity and in combination as well you will find some different type of symbols right so these symbols were very important to spread the teachings of uh, the God Jesus so it, these symbols were important to spread the religious messages early Christian art played an important role in the development of Christian theology and practice as well as the history of art and culture yes we can say so because uh, this we have evidences uh, artists and archaeologists archaeologists they found these kind of artifacts and the artworks some of them were like fresco paintings and mosaics were there and some architectural designs also found of that era so it shows simply that uh, this was the initial starting of art and culture after that the renaissance the baroque the rococo and other art movements came so as you can say that this was the base of the modern art that we see in today's world okay so please like share and subscribe to this video let's get to the some key features of early christian art right so here i'm going to show you some good relevant examples whatever we will discuss I will be showing you some vis visuals of that thing so that you can easily understand this topic and the question in your NATA NID NIFT examination they might ask you some techniques and some any historical aspects related to this early Christian art you will be able to answer that without any problem so let's get to the points so the very first thing that I am going to discuss in today's class with the visual examples that is symbolism now what does this mean what is the meaning of symbolism Christian art often used symbols to represent abstract concepts such as faith hope and love the most common symbols used in early Christian art include the cross the dove and the fish and the peacock also so let's get to these symbols so as you can see the first symbol here the fish this is symbolized Jesus and his followers although it is not very relevant but uh, because it was a very initial time that time the artists they have made this symbol to show the Jesus and his followers right coming to the next symbol the cross now this cross it was something like this with the loop in the upper side so this is also one of the early Christian art related symbol as you can see here in the right hand side and what was the significance of this cross this cross symbolizes Jesus crucifixion and resurrection which is equivalent to rebirth of Jesus Christ now coming to the third symbol that is dove dove is a bird which looks like a pigeon 
so this dove symbolizes the holy spirit and peace you will see in today's world also uh, if you want to sim make want to make a symbol related to word peace we will make dove right so this was the first representation first visual example we have of uh, holy spirit and peace which came from the christianity now there was one more uh, symbol that is called chi ro the, this specific symbol you can see here in the right hand side which looks like letter p and x are combined together and it has some two pictorial marks in the right hand side as well as in the left hand side and have some doodle over this so these kind of symbols also found in the form of uh, the 3d sculptures and fresco as well as the mosaic so this is the symbol it was uh, an earlier symbol of uh, representation of the christ okay now let's get to the more symbols now this is the fourth symbol we have alpha and omega uh, this alpha and omega symbolize Jesus as the beginning and end of all things so you can see this is omega and inside this you can see the letter alpha you probably have studied some of you in physics in your 10th or maybe 12th standard so you can identify these uh, alphabets easily now coming to the next that is an anchor anchor symbolize hope and steadfastness so this was an old symbol related to Christianity or we can say early Christian art now the next symbol that is good shepherd which symbolize Jesus love and protection for his followers so this is also a kind of fresco which was made in early period between 1 to 6th century as I told you now I would like to discuss uh, more things but uh, before that please like share and subscribe to this video now uh, we would discuss uh, the narrative scenes which were actually the depiction of uh, the Christ Christianity portion uh, the life of Jesus there were some uh, incidents which were taken from the life of Jesus Christ and his disciples so Christian art frequently depicted scenes from the Bible that's true because uh, it was initial time till the Renaissance the artist uh, the subject was very famous between all the artists in Europe that was Christianity and the Bible so most of the paintings you will find you will see is the depiction and the representation of the biblical stories right such as uh, nativity the crucifixion and the last judgment these scenes were often used to teach and inspire believers that is very true so we'll see some practical examples as well I have three examples of the stories from the Bible so the first one you can see here this is written crucifixion Jesus death on the cross so as we have a lot of uh, depictions we have uh, a lot of uh, visual examples of uh, death of Jesus on the cross but uh, here in the right hand side the upper part you see this is the probably the first depiction the visual representation of this event called crucifixion although in this picture you can see this is very basic picture which is looking very 2d but you should understand this in that time the artists we have uh, a lot of uh, technologies and products available but in that era there was a very limited uh, availability of the things but still artists imagined and have made 
these kind of artworks the one you see here in the right hand side this is probably the very first visual representation of the crucifixion right now coming to the resurrection uh, this is actually related to the rebirth of Jesus Christ Jesus arising from the death so in this small picture the mid one picture you can easily see that uh, the mid character is Jesus Christ and in the right and the left hand side you can see these two people here in the right hand side are disciples of Jesus Christ and in the left hand side are angels this is the representation of angels right so this the painting the artwork you see here this is and what type of techniques so this is called mosaic right now coming to the very famous painting you probably have heard about the painting of uh, Leonardo da Vinci the very famous artist but uh, he made that painting in the Renaissance this the chapter we are talking about early Christian art uh, and the Last Supper Jesus final meal with his disciples now you can see all the disciples are standing uh, sitting here in the right hand side and this is Jesus Christ in the left hand side so you can see this is probably the first depiction and the first visual representation of the Last Supper this might be the inspiration for Leonardo da Vinci to made uh, the very tremendous artwork that we see in the Renaissance with the right proportion everything is looking very nice with the right perspective but in all these artworks you cannot find the very good perspective the very good proportion of the human body also the colors are not very blended as you see in Renaissance, Baroque, Rococo and Realism there were a lot of art movements so this was the very initial artwork as you can see very 2d now let's discuss more about the artworks and um, baptism baptism is uh, one of the ceremony related to Christianity so Moses striking the rock in the desert a prototype of baptism so here you can see this the first first uh, baptism and this is the artwork related to baptism and the, uh, the technique which was used to make this artwork that was fresco fresco is a kind of technique we'll discuss about that also don't worry about it now coming to the next part healing of the bleeding woman now Jesus restoring a blind uh, women's sight yeah this should be the women so actually Jesus healing the bleeding woman here you can see in this picture this is also a kind of 2d representation of uh, the life of Jesus Christ and the uh, uh, incidents inspired by the life cycle of the Jesus Christ so uh, here also you can see the colors are very dull and you cannot see very 3d effect in this painting also the background is very flat the characters which are made without the proportion very very flat but still it is actually very important because this was a uh, base to today's art that we do okay we'll discuss more things about this topic but uh, I want you to like share and subscribe to this video to all your groups okay now the next thing that I am going to discuss here with all of you that is frescoes and mosaics these two techniques were quite famous uh, in that era to make some artwork early Christians art made extensive use of frescoes and mosaics to decorate churches and other religious buildings these artworks were often large scale and brightly colored and were designed to convey a sense of awe and reverence now let's get to the practical examples now uh, what is fresco why this word is coming again and again fresco actually is a painting technique where wet plaster is painted with pigments and those pigments can be obtained from uh, minerals uh, creating a durable and long-lasting artwork that becomes a permanent part of the wall or surface it is painted on that is true the fresco art you will find in 
a lot of uh, Indian sites if you visit the caves of Maharashtra the Ajanta Elora caves you will find the fresco techniques was also there if you visit some uh, forts and palaces in the state of Rajasthan you will find this fresco technique is also used in that part also right so fresco is one of the oldest technique to make the long lasting artwork and uh, once it is painted it will be dry and will become a permanent part of the wall or the surface where it is painted okay now on the other hand we have mosaic mosaic is an art technique where small pieces of colored glass or stone are arranged together to create a large image it's often used as a decorative feature in architecture and was popular in early christian art that is correct because in that time there were very limited resources to make some artwork so uh, the artists from that era they have used the uh, the colored glass or stones and they have arranged in that order and made uh, very tremendous artworks related to the biblical stories right now let's get to the some practical examples now this is a painting from that era early christian art and the, the title of the painting is christ among his apostles catacomb of domitilia this was made in early fourth century so this painting as you can see here in the right hand side this was made by applying a technique called fresco on the wall but still the characters and everything the human characters you see here these are looking quite 2d okay and the colors are also not uh, very interesting but still it has importance in the art history now this is another artwork here you can see this is Christ and and the disciples in the heavenly Jerusalem this is also one of the depiction of the heaven with the disciples of the Jesus Christ you can see angels you can see the cross here this is also a kind of artwork and the technique that was used is mosaic small pieces of uh, stones and the colored glass are used in this artwork now this is also one of the good example of mosaic early christian arch mosaic of jerusalem and bethlehem you can see this is a depiction of a palace and there are some animals maybe the sheep and the colors are used uh, the mixed colors the red and yellow and the blue are the important and the major colors are used in this artwork okay Mary and infant this is also a mosaic art and you can see the characters and everything is not very balanced but still the colors you can see here the different shades and the tints of green shades and the tints of yellow and so on other colors fine so we'll discuss more things I want you to like share and subscribe to this channel and this video now port portraiture portraiture is to ref it means to make a face and uh, specifically a human form like somebody sitting somebody is uh, doing his work you have to focus on that human character so in the christian art also include portraits of important figures such as saints martyrs and church leaders these portraits were often styled and idolized and were intended to inspire devotion and admiration right so let's get to this one this is a, a portrait of Jesus Christ and the technique that was used is called fresco you can see you can easily identify if you see these paintings and you will compare these paintings with the Renaissance art you will easily understand that there is a difference in these two type of arts because uh, these are the very initial art so you will see it will look very kiddish kind of 
very 2D lines are there not uh, proportion there will not be any uh, principle of design followed in these artworks so it will be easy for you to identify right now coming to the next part that was also has a uh, significance importance in the early christian art that is architectural design in early christian art was closely integrated with architectural design with many works of art serving as decorative elements within churches and other religious buildings this integration of art and architecture helped to create a unfined a uh, unified and harmonious space for worship right so let's get to the visual examples this is a picture depiction of the church of that time so uh, the churches we see now are the different churches which are the part of uh, renaissance and other art movements um, but this is the one of the ancient type of church which was probably made in the second or third century ad so it has certain things you can see uh, the entrance is known as gatehouse so in the entrance you can see a building here that is the entrance of this church called gatehouse and the fountain was very common in the churches of that period and you can see other things as well so you know, they will just uh, give you some visual examples to identify between the churches of uh, early Christian art and the later period so probably I believe you will be able to do so this is an interior the picture you see on the screen this is a, a picture of an interior of the church of that era you can see this this is an interior and it's looking very normal there is no a lot of decorations and all with a semicircular arch uh, in this uh, entrance as well as in the windows right overall uh, early Christian art was uh, an important part of the development of Christian culture and identity helping to establish a visual language of expressing Christian beliefs and values through its use of symbolism narrative and portraiture early christian art helped to create a rich and varied artistic tradition that continues to inspire and influence artists today that's true fine so this is the first part is done of the early christian art and I would like to show you one more example so that you can identify you can differentiate between what was the difference between the artwork of that time as well as the artwork of uh, after some time like uh, if you talk about the northern renaissance you have to know that uh, how to identify the the techniques the artists used in that time in the early period as well as in the renaissance art right so let's get to the one more thing that is the example of a very famous artist called Albert Studer and he was actually artist from the Germany so give me a moment
Okay, now we are going to discuss about one of the very famous artists from Northern Renaissance. His name was Albrecht Dürer. Although he was a German person, so the pronunciation would be different, but in English we call him Albrecht Dürer. Now, let's talk about this uh, tremendous artist. He was born on May the 21st, 1471 at uh, Nuremberg, Germany and died on April the 6th, 1528 in the same place, Nuremberg, Germany. His nationality was German and the art movement he was associated with called Northern Renaissance. Painting school, he was from German school and the field were painting, printmaking, engraving and also art theory. So let's discuss about this uh, very famous artist from the Germany, Albrecht Dürer. He was a German painter and printmaker who is widely considered one of the most important artists of the Northern Renaissance. Here are some key points about his paintings. So let's get to the points. So as you can see these are one of uh, two paintings are there of the rabbit you can see clearly now uh, Durer's painting often feature intricate details and a high level of realism influenced by the Italian Renaissance although he was a German person but his artworks was quite inspired and influenced by the Italian Renaissance if you do see the Italian Renaissance, the starting, the origin of Renaissance period and the Renaissance artwork was uh, Florence, Italy, as you know. So in Germany, it spreaded by the artworks of the famous artists like uh, Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael and Michelangelo. Durer was fascinated by the human form <coughs> and created many detailed portraits and self-portraits throughout his career. Yes, that is quite true. If you do see the artwork over the internet of uh, Albrecht Durer, you will find that uh, he was very fascinated by the human anatomy. He have made a lot of uh, things related, not human anatomy, you will say the animal anatomy as well but most of his work is related to the human depiction so you will see all his artwork is related to the human action figures <coughs> as you can see in this first picture this is the depiction of the human portrait human body uh, in the section he have uh, divided the front view and the side elevation as well also the hand you can see and this is one of his uh, self portrait you can see here he was uh, skilled in variety of media including oil painting watercolor and printmaking that is quite true he was a uh, master in oil paint he knew how to use oil paint on the canvas and the panel whatever he used uh, he knew to use the mediums related to the watercolor and the printmaking he was into printmaking as well so these are two prints made by Albert Studio as you can see on the screen his religious paintings often feature rich symbolism and emotional intensity such as his famous four apostles piece so this is the painting he had made in two panels of uh, disciples of Jesus Christ for apostles and you can see it has uh, realism quite equivalent to the Italian Renaissance so if you compare this one with the early Christian art you will find the difference very easily you can see there is uh, the reflection and the 3d aspect of the the paint he used so you usually can uh, identify, you can differentiate between that artwork, the early Christian art and this artwork as well. Now Durer's work were very highly 
regarded during his lifetime and have continued to influence artists for centuries that is quite true so I would like to show you some artwork of Albert Durer so let's get to the first point of his artwork that is related to the paintings that to the oil paintings okay so this painting was made by Albert Durer in 1506 the title of the painting is the feast of the rosary which is also the depiction of the biblical story you can see in this painting uh, the background is quite 3d there is natural articles as well in this painting and the joy and the happiness is the main theme of the painting with the right proportion of human anatomy the proportion as well as the projection of the clothing in this uh, artwork you can see looking very interesting this is also one of the important artwork of Albert Durer that is known as adoration of the Trinity in which uh, this is the depiction of the biblical stories related to the life of uh, Jesus Christ and you can see the design and the drawing related to the heaven okay has a quite interesting proportion and the application of colors is also very interesting adoration of the Magi 1504 oil on wood and this paint work this artwork is located in the gallery of Degili Uffizi Florence Italy you do see the ruins of this architectural building the animals the human characters everything is here this is a, also a story related to the life of Jesus Christ this artwork is also important it's located in the National Gallery London the title of this painting is Saint Jerome in the Wilderness 1495 oil on panel it was made by the artist this uh, is also one of the artwork of uh, Albert Tudor in this painting you can see the human form is looking quite interesting as well as the background and the surroundings with the right proportion and the very interesting application of the color and the title of the painting is uh, Detail Heller Madonna which was made in 1505 and now located in the National Gallery of Art Washington DC this artwork you can see uh, as I told you earlier that uh, Albert Durer was uh, quite interested and uh, very much influenced to draw the human anatomy whether the portrait or the entire body in the action he was very much interested so the title of this painting is Saint Jerome 1521 he made this pain painting and it, this painting is located in the Museum of National de Arte Antiga Lisbon in Portugal now coming to the next part of it we I would like to discuss the portraits wh what he made in his life some of the famous portrait we'll discuss about <coughs> uh, the title of the painting is Albert Tudor the elder with Rosary it was made in 1490 and located now in Galleria Degli Uffizi de of Florence Florence is located in Italy okay now the next portrait is a portrait of uh, Bernhard von Riesen it was made in 1521 and this is located in this uh, gallery the name is Gamal de Galeria Alte Meister Dresden this is the name in the German language of the gallery is given but you have to see the portrait part of it that he was very fascinating to make the human forms this painting is uh, also a portrait 
and the title is Portrait of uh, Heiron Yams Hall Schuher. This is also in German, located in Berlin, this artwork. So you don't have to remember the name in any language. You just uh, have knowledge of uh, to identify the paintings and you should know, you should be aware uh, the artists whatever the artist was you should know that uh, this person yeah I heard about this I know the name of the artist this is a portrait of a man Prado Mu Museum Madrid Spain now coming to the next portion that are engravings engravings are actually a kind of printmaking So this is uh, expulsion from paradise 1510 he made man of sorrows this is also engraving of the artist 